If you're new to Flutter, it is an open source UI toolkit from Google that's loved for its ability to create beautiful, natively compiled applications for mobile, web, desktop, and beyond, all from a single code base. In this video, I'm going to break down major updates from the latest release Flutter 3.27. As many of you already know, Flutter has been on an incredible journey since its inception. It's no longer just a framework for making mobile apps. It's become a full-fledged toolkit for building applications across platforms, from Android to iOS, web, desktop, and even embedded systems. UI framework is the heart of what makes Flutter so visually impressive. You know how keeping your designs consistent across platforms is one of Flutter's superpowers. In this release, themes of card, dialogue, and tab bar have been refactored. Now we can use card theme data, dialog theme data, and tab bar theme data to override the default visual properties of the component. Well, it's about to get even better with the normalized material theme updates in future. Now it will be easier to align the design between platforms without manually tweaking every component. iOS developers, here's one for you. The Cupertino library, Flutter's way of building native iOS-styled UIs, just got a significant upgrade with improved animations, more accurate styling, and better performance. Several Cupertino widgets have been updated like checkbox, sliding segmented control, navigation bar, button, and so on. And this one's for the interactive storytellers out there. Carousel View has more features. CarouselView.Weighted is introduced, enabling more dynamic layouts within carousels. Whether it's for images, products, or content galleries, you can create swipeable carousels with ease. This has been a long-awaited feature that designers and app users alike will absolutely love. Moving on to layout updates, rows and columns now have a built-in spacing property. Finally, no more wrapping widgets with unnecessary padding or tweaking spacing hacks. This new property is simple, clean, and efficient. How about smoother route transitions? With updated model routes, we can have multiple route transition options on one page using Flutter's navigator and router. For text-heavy applications, Flutter's text selection enhancements let users interact with text much more naturally across platforms. All right, we've talked about the UI. Now let's head under the hood and look at the engine updates. First up is the big one. Impeller is now default rendering engine on modern Android devices. If you've heard of Impeller, you know it's a major leap forward for rendering. Impeller replaces Skia on Android to deliver consistent, predictable performance. With this update, Complex animations and UI effects can run faster and smoother, and developers get fewer headaches. And speaking of performance, iOS developers aren't left out. Flutter has tuned the engine to run more efficiently on iOS devices. There's smoother scrolling, better memory management, and improved support for native integrations. Flutter apps will now feel even more at home on iPhones. On the web front, there have been significant improvements as well. For instance, Web apps built with Flutter now load faster, with improved performance and rendering efficiency across browsers. Flutter now supports the iOS Swift Package Manager natively. Previously, it was only available on Flutter's main channel, but now available on the beta and stable. This means integrating Swift libraries into your Flutter projects is much easier. Apple developers, you're going to love this improvement in workflow. Android users, there's more. Flutter now supports edge-to-edge -edge designs on Android 14, ensuring your app looks modern and maximizes screen real estate. Additionally, freeform window support allows apps to adapt seamlessly to foldables and tablets. And for those of you who love Kotlin, Flutter build scripts now work better with Kotlin. Flutter tooling now supports Kotlin build files. Clean code, faster builds, it's a win-win. Let's look at some pub dev enhancements, things that improve the developer experience a new metric download count is introduced. This new metric will allow developers to find popular packages more precisely. Flutter also launching pub workspaces with Dart 3.6 to support the development of multiple related packages in one monorepo. With this feature, we can define a root pub spec that references the other packages in the repository. Let me know in the comments below if you want a separate video on how this works. Now let's talk about the developer tools that powers the Flutter development experience. iOS Deep Link Validation is added in the DevTools Deep Links tool. Now we can validate deep links for both Android and iOS. For those of you building web apps, Flutter 3.27 enhances the debugging experience specifically for the browser. With offline data support, 
we can export network data as .har files and load memory snapshots for offline analysis. With improved memory debugging even after an app crash, we will be able to view memory tool data. Also, we can enable the experimental WebAssembly feature in DevTools settings. It would have faster performance compared to the standard JavaScript version. Flutter Inspector also got some major changes. Enhanced UI debugging with the condensed widget tree improves usability. Enhanced details view of the selected widget shows an inline layout viewer, widget properties, and flex layout explorer. All right, we've explored the shiny new features in Flutter 3.27. Flutter is a powerful, production-ready toolkit trusted by some of the world's biggest companies to solve real business challenges. If you are a Flutter enthusiast, you may want to watch other Flutter videos on my channel. See you in the next video. Keep fluttering!